Verse 18 in Colossians 1. He was supreme in the beginning and leading the resurrection parade. <laughs> oh, he's supreme in the end. From the beginning to the end, he's there towering far above everything and everyone. So spacious is he, so roomy, that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. <laughs> Not only that, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, people and things, animals and atoms, get properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmonies. And because of his death, his blood, that poured down from the cross. See, he was all in, baby. He was all in. I'm telling you, that's worth reading again. And I tell you, you do that in your own time. This man was plugged into the right source when he got this picture, right? Everything in the universe, people, things, animals, and atoms get properly fixed and fit in vibrant harmonies because he was willing to come and sacrifice that life. Sin came in the world. He purged the sin. If you'll make it your priority, if you'll come in under that blood and say, I choose to surrender my life to you, Lord. That's how you get to the Father through the Son. The Father opens your eyes to see the Son. Then you have to step into that proper and right relationship with him. And look, your own natural strengths are awesome. God gave you those natural strengths. Your emotions are God-given. But the sin nature causes us not to be able to control our emotions. And you know how it is. You only need to make one really bad mistake out of a thousand, and it could change your life forever. There was a, a, a player in the NFL a few years ago who... Um, was in, in the training camp and he was a rookie and there was another rookie and they went out drinking it one night and there was a car accident and one survived and the other was killed. And the one that was survived was the driver and he was charged with murder because he was drunk while he was driving. And obviously he, was, he felt tr terribly convicted so one of the Thanksgiving Day games on the NFL, they did a story about the mother of the son that was killed. She invited the murderer, the one who was drunk, to her house for Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> she was not somebody that you would look at and say, she's going to be on the cover of a magazine or she's going to give a YouTube TED talk. Just a Christian. Don't know how much formal education she had, but she knew Jesus, man. She knew God. And she's just looking in the camera. She says, I know the Lord. I've known the Lord my whole life, and I know if I don't forgive this one who killed my son, I'm going to be worse off. That bitterness is going to eat me up. But I know that he forgave me, so I'm going to forgive this boy. And that's the word she used. They cut back into the studio. And one of the commentators is a man named Shannon Sharp, who was never at a loss for words, when I tell you. And he's looking in the camera like, he was speechless. He's like, where did she come from? I'll tell you where she came from, the kingdom of God. She's a child of God. She got plugged in, right? What did he say? The broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, all of them, how? People and things and animals and atoms, they all get properly fixed. Now, it's not good what happened to her son, clearly. But then she had a fork in the road. She had a choice that she had to make. Was she going to live in the bitterness or live in the forgiveness? And look, it wasn't just for her. It was for this man who was in the, in the studio looking at it and saying, that's otherworldly when somebody can do that, because it is. It's the kingdom of God and the earth. We're those ambassadors, and we're called to live at that standard, okay? Okay, and then he says it in verse 21 to remind us that we, you yourselves are a case study of what God does. How many would say that? That the change that happened in your life made you a case study. <laughs> and at one time, you all had your backs turned to God, say amen, thinking rebellious thoughts of him and giving him trouble every chance you got. 
And that's why we should pause when we sing that song, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. He chased me down. He fought for me until I was found. I didn't even want to be found. I was so condemned and so guilty and, and so wanting to hide my pain and just take drugs to just try to medicate the pain. And he didn't care about any of that. He chased me down. I had a back turn towards him. Rebellious thoughts. Trouble every chance I got. But now, by giving himself completely at the cross and actually dying for you, Christ brought you over to God's side. See, so he starts out this little portion. Colossians 1, I started at verse 15. He says, Christ is the, the visible part of an invisible God. If you're wondering about God, just like Philip, show us. We want to see the Father. And Jesus said, oh no, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. <laughs> the average person on the street is not a Christian. When you ask them about Jesus, they'd say, yeah, good guy, philosopher. Did, you know, we remember him, but they're not trying to be like him. They don't see what can be seen through the Spirit about him. You wonder why, right? And I think it's partly because we need to be in a humility when we come to him and say, I have to submit my life to you. I'm not going to just try to take you piecemeal. This isn't a buffet that I get to choose the part I want. I'm either all in or I'm not in. Now, there's stages, right, of our life, but I'm not trying to condemn anybody either. You know, there's, there's such a thing called backsliding and people get confused and they get hurt in churches. I get all that. But the real thing is, he's not forcing himself on anybody. As great as he is, he still wants you to be the one to come in contact. He's making the bid to connect with you. And you have to want it. So that's what I'm saying. If, if you've tried a million other things, and I know many of us have, and there's more millions of other things now than there ever were, and you haven't tried Jesus, we're just telling you confidently. <laughs> if you open your heart to him and you say yes to him, He's going to meet you in ways that you will never expect, that we can never predict. He just does it. He just makes himself real to you. And he'll put other people in touch with you that will help you understand it. It's just time after time after time we've heard this. So he first gave his life for us, and now we choose to give our lives for him. Is that going to make you a better father? Yes. Better wife? Yes. Better husband? Better anything? Yes except a better sinner. <laughs> and it won't be that you don't still sin. You'll just have Holy Spirit inside you reminding you that it was a sin and helping you not want to do that again. And before we knew the Lord, we were sinning and just saying, that's how life is. Do unto others before they do it unto you. Dog eat dog, right? What goes around comes around. We all know those rules, man. That's a broken rule. Doesn't lead to life. Christ brought you over to God's side when you were on the wrong side. He put your lives together whole and holy in his presence. I'm going to ask some people that are here, could you just lift your hands? So I'm just say, I am whole and holy in his presence. Thank you, Lord, for filling me with your presence, for making me in your image, for never giving up on me in the past, in the present, and in the future of my life. You will never give up on me. You are relentless in your love for me. Not just for us, church, right? It's that we would be his ambassadors, that we would represent him in the earth, that we would go out and find that one that left the 99, that we would pray for those people that we don't know where they are right now, but pray that God would bring a Christian into their path. Pray that the Lord would make himself real.